Welcome to Blue Binderity. In this video we will take a look on how to connect the Raspberry Pi Pico W with Wi-Fi using MicroPython and uh, Tony IDE and also ChatGPT just because I'm a little bit lazy. So let's get right into it. I already prepared the question for ChatGPT. I need some MicroPython code to connect a Raspberry Pi Pico W to my Wi-Fi and let's see what it comes up with. It should be a pretty simple code and it already looks pretty simple and yeah there we go a pretty neat and short code let's take a quick look on the code we will import the network and time library we have an ssid that's obviously a name of our wi-fi and a passcode that's for sure and then we have a quick function here to connect actually to wi-fi that's all right it's pulling the ssid and the password from the variable we defined over there and then we get a nice little print so if the wi-fi is not yet connected it will print connecting to wi-fi on the console and as soon as we are connected it will print a message that we are connected to the certain wi-fi again pulling the ssid that we defined earlier and the network configuration also while we are actually trying to connect it will tell us waiting for connection and all this is basically called the connect to wi-fi function that ChatGPT just came up with and then later on the actual code is basically just calling this function so pretty efficient and nicely structured code we get here we will just copy it head over to tony and paste this code and then obviously I will quickly enter my credentials before we go ahead. So here we go, I entered my credentials and just scrolled a bit downward so my credentials are not disclosed. But I guess it's pretty simple, straightforward. You just put in the name of your Wi-Fi and the password of your Wi-Fi without any mistakes. So that's all done. So we will quickly hit save. And now it's asking us where we want to save it. We want to save it to the Raspberry Pi Pico, that's super important. For any code you need to save it to the Raspberry Pi Pico where it will be actually executed. So first save the code to the Pico and then execute the code. So here we go, we give it a file name, file name just Wi-Fi connect.python, hit OK and there we go. Now we can see here the file on our Raspberry Pi Pico. You could also conveniently just copy and paste the file from your computer to your Pico, but for the moment we are fine like this. What you may want to make sure is to save your file also on your computer. So we will just save it again also to our computer. Same name, just in documents, hit save and there we go. So we can later on deploy this code snippet to other Raspberry Pi Picos that we are using maybe in parallel. All right, code is saved right board down here is selected raspberry pi pico micro python correct language is selected in case you wonder how to set everything up and actually get to this point make sure to check out the previous video where all of this is explained how to install tony and how to connect the raspberry pi um, to your laptop and how to make sure that it can accept micro python and to make sure also that it pops up as a port down here that's all done, that's all checked. So let's just hit run code snippet. So we can follow it right here in the console and everything worked out pretty well. So we can see here it was first doing performing a soft reboot. Then we got the message connecting to network as we saw it in our code and ChatGPT previously, waiting for connection. Again, that's what we saw it also in our code. We saw also there that there was a time slip that we can see here of one second. So basically then it's again running this loop and showing it up. So we have this message three times. So it took around three seconds to connect. And then finally the confirmation connected to our Wi-Fi, the credential or the name SSID of our Wi-Fi. And then also as, as already teased here in the code, network configuration it will output the VLAN configuration, which it does here with all the credentials like IP address, not credentials, but the IP address, subnet masks, and so on. So that's it, we're connected with our Wi-Fi. So what you may wanna do is that you wanna make sure that you're actually connected to the internet because you're now connected to the Wi-Fi successfully, but also could be that your Wi-Fi is not connected to the internet or you just wanna make sure that it actually all worked 
point to point. So we'll quickly add a code that's giving us uh, the possibility to do a speed test. So we go back to ChatGPT quickly and ask it, can you add a bit of code to get a ping from google.com? So basically we want to have just a little code snippet here that's basically just pinging Google and measuring the time, how long it takes for, uh, for Google to answer, which is obviously kind of depending on the speed of Google, but mainly since Google is, let's say, consistent in speed compared to our Wi-Fi connection or to our internet connection, it's giving us the speed of our internet connection. So we will now just copy this function here instead of copying the whole code. We need to make sure that we don't need to import any more libraries, which we do, the socket one. So we will also need to co copy this one. So first copy this code, add it here. There we go. There we go. And now we need to make sure to import this socket. So I also added the import the socket library at the beginning. Again, didn't show it because I didn't want to disclose my credentials and we should be ready to go. Save it again, and let's make sure that we saved it actually to the Pico. Wi-Fi Connect, we will keep this one and overwrite it. Here we go. Um, since we saved the last time to our computer, I wasn't sure if it's actually saved to the Pico, that's why I wanted to save again. Obviously, we could have given it a different name, but to keep it simple, um, here we go. So this was pretty quick. Um, you can see here, again, a soft reboot connected right away, um, mainly so quickly, most likely because our Wi-Fi network now knew already the device, so it could connect way quicker than in the first time initially. And also we go down here and then we can see the message now, ping successful, Google is reachable. So actually just giving us the confirmation that it's reachable, not the speed that I was actually intending to. Obviously, we could now rewrite the code a little bit, but I think principle is clear. We have this confirmation that we are connected to the Wi-Fi from the first code snippet, and now we also have the confirmation that we are actually connected to the internet. So all the checks are done. Now we can go ahead and actually coding our little application, whatever we are aiming for. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching, and let me know down in the comments what you want to see for the next video. Until then, take care, see you next time.